You have a gun to your head. 60 seconds to decide. Which one do you think you need most? And write answers only. You have to take one of two pills. The blue pill gives you the ability to rewire your brain and transform your life in any way, shape, or form that you want. You can become the master of your mind and thus the master of your life. The red pill gives you the ability to control your motor sensory integrations, to control your body and learn any skill you want to learn at a mastery level. And I emphasize mastery. Mastery is reflected in those moments where you need your skills most, when the pressure is high and the momentum is low. The blue pill would help you unlock the true power of your brain and finally, reveal the true answer to whether or not we only use 10% of our brain capacity. The red pill will allow you to use a skill-based creation to solve any problem you have and achieve anything you want to achieve. 20 seconds to decide. Now is it going to be the power to control the body or the power to control the mind? Which pill is it going to be? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Wrong choice. There's a plot twist after all. You see, you don't need the blue nor the red pill. In fact, we all possess the abilities given by those two pills instinctively and biologically through the process of evolution. The reason it's a plot twist is because the world of neurology used to believe for the longest time that our brain's development process would come to slow down, plateau, and then stabilize. The idea of a plastic brain that can transmute its functions through late developed neurological networks was an absurd idea for neurological researchers back in the 1970s and 1980s. But then the research came out. Then came neuroplasticity, also known as the brain's plastic ability. It's the ability of neural networks in the brain to change through growth and reorganization. These changes range from individual neural pathways, making new connections and creating new thoughts, behaviors, and emotions, to systematic adjustments like cortical remapping and creating new neural networks. Examples of neuroplasticity can include any neural network changes that result from learning a new ability, environmental influences, practices, and psychological stress and factors, as defined in Wikipedia. And you see, the term neuroplasticity was first used by Polish neuroscientist Jerzy Konorski. In 1948, he observed a lot of changes in neural structures. Neurons are the cell that make up our brains. And although it wasn't widely used until the 1960s to the 1980s, that's when the research actually started developing towards creating the science of neuroplasticity or the science of the plastic brain. And you see, the scientific breakthrough changed humanity's conception on how we evolve. One breakthrough led with several dots of correlation connected to one another, led to a breakthrough in biology and in epigenetic memory. You see, our brain never stops developing. It slows down, yes, 
but the process of neuroplasticity is always happening and our brain is always creating new neural networks and getting rid of old not really used that often neural structures so what happens is that even though the development doesn't stop it can slow down a bit as you can see in this chart here now in bruce lipton's book the biology of belief he talks about how the first six years of a child's life program their subconscious mind after those six to seven years children use their subconscious mind to live their everyday life they learn not to run into the street to hold their parents hand in crowds and to listen when their parents say no another major point of lipton's book was that adults are acting through their subconscious brain 95 percent of the time the other five percent of the time that's when our conscious mind is helping us navigate through our everyday lives this means that we are spending almost 95 percent of our time acting based on the beliefs we acquire as children now i'm gonna say it again and let that sink in this means that we are spending almost 95 percent of our time acting and behaving based on the blueprint we acquire as children that form our subconscious beliefs so in your daily life 95 percent of all your thoughts beliefs habits actions thought patterns emotions and feelings you experience are guided by our subconscious brain and what's even worse is that we are not aware of this subconscious guidance because our conscious brain is constantly focused on creating the perceptual image of the world we live in, of, of reality, right? Let me give you an example of how your subconscious brain can be influencing your present state. Now, we all have thoughts programmed in our subconscious brain related to the concepts of personal wealth, income, and money. In a study done on lottery winners, researchers found that lottery winners are more likely to declare bankruptcy within three to five years. But how is that even possible? If you were to receive $10 million right now, do you really think that you might lose all that money and declare bankruptcy within three to five years? See, right now, most of you are probably thinking, there is no way that would happen to me. However, your subconscious brain thinks otherwise. Because you see, if you were conditioned to believe that in order for you to live an abundant life, you don't need more than four to five thousand dollars a month, your subconscious brain will guide you and steer you in a way to earn four to five thousand dollars a month. But the thing is, that's where it gets tricky. If you make more than that, then your subconscious brain will start steering you and guiding you towards spending whatever extra income you got recklessly sometimes and based on emotion just to go back to that threshold of four to five thousand dollars a month that's the comfort zone that's the survival zone that the subconscious brain got used to now when we talk about the conscious mind we talk about the creative mind when we talk about the subconscious mind we talk about the habit mind all right so keep that idea in mind first. Conscious mind is the creative mind. Subconscious mind is the habit mind. Now, Dr. Joe Dispenza in his series, Rewired on Gaia, gives you a very interesting metaphor to help us understand our brains better. So imagine you have a computer. And this computer, of course, has certain specifications when it comes to memory space, functioning speed, and utility capacity. Now, if you were to download a professional video editing software on that computer that surpasses its functioning capacity. What's going to happen is, as soon as you open the software, it's first going to take a while for it to launch. And as you get used to it, it's going to start glitching and it's going to run slowly. You'll have a very hard time working on it. Eventually, you're going to end up closing the program, deleting it, as you cannot really operate it, as you cannot really operate it on your current computer. Instead, you decide to download a basic software that your computer can actually handle, and you can finally edit your videos. But it's nowhere near as good as what you could have done if you were editing on the professional software, obviously. 
And you see, in this metaphor, the computer itself is the subconscious brain, and the creative video editing aspect is your conscious brain. So just like the computer has a fixed capacity, your subconscious brain also has a fixed capacity. But it's not fixed by nature or biology or evolution. It's fixed by the biology of belief. Now, what created this capacity? Well, your thoughts, social influences, experiences, environment, perception, and as we said, most importantly, beliefs. These are all factors that shape the capacity of our subconscious brain. Now, let me give you a more tangible example. If you have a goal where you want to make $200,000 in one year, the only thing standing between you, the goal setting process, and the goal achievement is simply your subconscious brain. If your computer is programmed to operate on a level where you can only make $50,000 a year, it will be impossible to try and make $200,000 a year. Your subconscious brain will create obstacles, doubt, negative thoughts, and detrimental behaviors to make sure that you don't exceed that $50,000 threshold. But why? Because your subconscious brain is your habit brain. And it is very hard to try and break a habit. Your subconscious brain will not only fight for your biological survival, but also it will fight for your psychological survival, those concepts that are rooted in the brain as beliefs. And whenever you set yourself a goal that seems out of reach, out of the comfort zone, when it comes to your processing capacity, you will not be functioning properly, and thus you will most likely end up failing. And you see, this is exactly what happens when we set a new year resolution. See, why is it that more than 90% of the people who set a new year resolution would end up dropping it and quitting by January 14th? It's because they were operating on a conscious level and your conscious brain has a limited capacity. This is the first part of the answer. Yes, your conscious brain is indeed limited in, in its capacity when compared to your subconscious brain. Hence the myth that says we only use 10% of our brain capacity. Now, when you set a goal and you try to achieve it, what happens is that for the first two, three days, you are excited and motivated to achieve it. Even when you feel lazy or tired, you still gather the motivation you have and you keep working on achieving your goal. Nonetheless, your willpower is often perceived like a battery. We know that the more we use our willpower, the more it gets drained. That's why people, when they go on a diet, they will not binge on a large pizza at 6 a.m. in the morning, but they're way more likely to do it at 11 p.m. at night. That's when they use their willpower throughout the day and they got, it's nighttime, they're exhausted, and they say, you know what, I might as well just do it. There's not enough willpower to steer them another direction. And this is where our subconscious brain steps in and, and it throws us off the track, right? It throws us back into our old habits, old conditioning, what we're used to. That's the habit brain. However, if your subconscious brain was also wired based on a healthy diet, when your conscious brain fails to operate and steps in with willpower, your subconscious brain steps in and takes care of the job, making sure that you do stay on track. That's just because it's conditioned for you to follow a healthy lifestyle and a healthy diet. You see, you always use your brain's capacity to its fullest. But what happens is when there's a contradiction between what you consciously want and what you subconsciously believe, then your brain capacity starts to become limited as you are going through a fight with yourself. There's, there's a quote that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. And there's a lot of wisdom in that because oftentimes the biggest enemy that we ever have to face and encounter is ourselves, is the, the guy or the girl you see in the mirror when you wake up in the morning and you're washing your face. And if you want to use your brain's capacity to its fullest, you need to make sure that your subconscious brain is working with you, not against you. If you are consciously perceiving, if you are consciously pursuing a goal that goes against your subconscious, that goes against your subconscious conditioning, you will realistically only be able to work on that goal effectively about five to 10% of your day. The other 90%, your subconscious brain will try to distract you in any way, form, or shape possible. 
And there's an interesting state that a lot of people often experience known as the state of flow. The state of flow is when your conscious brain is in coherence with your subconscious brain. And here's where it gets crazy. On a conscious level, we can process up to 120 bits of information a second, which is amazing. However, on a subconscious level, we can process up to 11 million bits of information a second. Just imagine. That's like the difference between winning $120 and $11 million. And a state of flow is usually stimulated by synchrony between subconscious habituation and conscious focus, a mix of emotion and skill, passion and thrill, a state in which the genius within us is deep into work. And you know who I'm talking about. This version of yourself that appears every now and then and surprises you even. You look yourself in the mirror and you don't even recognize yourself. Those problems that seemed like the end of the world were met by solutions as you were operating from a higher state of consciousness. You were operating with absolute coherence and flow between your conscious brain and your subconscious brain. Now you see, this means that no matter how old you are, what your background is, or what you do in life, you can rewire your brain to learn new languages, skills, develop new patterns of thinking, habits, and feelings. You can change everything within and outside just by taking control of your cognitive growth. Well, the question is how? For you to fully understand neuroplasticity, there are three main pillars you need to explore. One, neurons that fire together, wire together. Number two, if you don't use it, you lose it. And number three, neural structures are TFAR loops that provide comfort, security, longevity, and survival. If you can understand those three pillars of neuroplasticity properly, you will be able to apply neuroplasticity and unlock a potential within yourself that you don't even currently know. When you get to that point where your conscious brain and subconscious brain are working in coherence and synchrony, 90% of the time instead of 10% of the time, you will start tapping into the potential, the real potential that you have within. Stay tuned for the next videos where we will explore the rest of those pillars.